Today's episode is brought to you by Square Cash. Hello. Square Cash is the best. It's the best way to pay people back, period. Friends, family, lizards, munchkins, ghosts, anyone among the living or dead. I mean, you know, you can't really pay people back who are dead, but you know what I mean? If they were alive, they should have Square Cash. Sending and receiving money is totally free and fast, and most payments can be deposited directly into the bank account in seconds. That's like this fast. That's like that fast. Download the free Square Cash app for iOS and Android now. Episode 21, my babies, how did we do it? How did we get here? If you hear my voice, um, I was sick about a week and a half ago. I remember, you remember in the last episode. And um, and, uh, and and I was sick and it, it settled after I was better. And now I'm fucking, I, I, my voice was going and then I had five shows and it left. It was like, you know what? Sayed the fuck Nara. It went like that. And it's gone. <clears throat> I keep having to clear my throat because of all this stuff. It's super annoying, but really cool that I'm telling you guys this because I'm sure it, it makes it really r- for good podcasting. But I'm in New York. I'm on the road, and I have no um, producer with me. So I turned the air off in my hotel room so you wouldn't hear it. It's already blistering hot because in New York, it's too hot. And you know it is. Because it's just it's too humid. All right? Ha's fine. Humid's not. Let's wrap that up. Let's wrap it all up. Let's not be human. So you're going to hear some... Oh, not be human or humid? Not be humid. Um, so a rainstorm started, and I'm starting this. I'm doing this podcast. So anyway, my voice is gone. Um, I think I sound a little bit sexy and raspy, but when I hit the high notes... Uh, look at that. That's awful. Ugh, that's awful can't do that luther vandross shit um <clears throat> so yeah so i'm in new york city let's see what happens so far uh i went to baltimore which i never wanted to go to really except for the fact that now i have um uh i i there's a theater there that was awesome man it was called the soundstage and i had two shows and it was great i got like uh, 25 to 30 minutes that's new not from man on fire um so i'm working on that and I'm still try- doing some of the Man on Fire stuff. Uh, so that comes out in uh, – my special comes out in Netflix in like seven days. So <clears throat> I'm going to have to get this new material popping. Um, so I did two shows in Baltimore, which were great. Um, shout out to Kid in the Front Row. What the hell was his name? Oh, damn it. I already don't remember. He was a 16-year-old kid, which I was like, how the fuck did he get in? But his dad was there. Um, I can't remember his name, but he was cool. I actually brought him up on stage to hold the microphone while I tied my shoe and he was a real good sport about it. Sorry, I forget your name, bro, but you were super cool. Um, and, uh, then I went to Atlantic city and I did the show in Atlantic city at the Borgata, Borgata, which was awesome. I love playing there. It's a casino and in casinos, you see the dregs of the earth. So that's cool. I don't know why, but every time I go to a casino, I see somebody with one arm. I don't know what the fuck that's all about. Uh, And nothing wrong with – well, there's a lot wrong with having one arm. You can't do a lot of things that you should be able to do. But um, not trying to down – get down on anybody who has one arm. But there's always somebody with one arm at a casino. And I guess that's because you only need one one arm to pull the lever on the fucking – the fuck's it called? The – slots um yeah so i did that uh got the fuck out of there because atlantic city i mean just casinos are not my thing and then went to long island where i played in huntington and that was awesome um great shows had a fucking heckler at the second show this fucking idiot that uh kept calling out this lady uh who 
came to be known as during the show as an accountant, and she was so drunk. And Long Island's like one of those places, like, there were a thousand people at the show, and there was definitely, like, a client of hers there, but she didn't give a fuck. She ended up saying, guess who's getting this dick tonight? Because she was with a dude. And I was like, you're an accountant. Hey, you're a fucking accountant. Don't be like that, period. But also, you accountant, you do that, you're the worst accountant. Okay? Oh, my throat, man. I should be taking it easy because I got shows in Florida. But, um... <clears throat> I got to do this. I got to back up this fucking Brinks truck, dude. I mean, Jesus Christ. I got to... What do you think? The podcast stops because my voice is gone? No, I got to back up the fucking Brinks truck. I got to make sure Dunbar and Brinks are fucking reversing in my garage. I want to thank everybody for listening. Last week's episode got the most uh, downloads. And let's keep this shit going, man. Because it really makes me want to do more podcasts. You know what? I'll tell you what. If we get more and more downloads, I could do twice a week. I would do that. <clears throat> I just want to make sure that everybody wants that. Whew. Um, so, yeah. Um, I'm coming up on uh, Florida, West Palm Beach. I'll be doing that. Um, get your tickets at crystalia.com. And uh, that's that. Then I got Austin coming up and uh, and, uh, and some other ones. Albuquerque. Who lives in a, Hey, got a question for people in Al, Albuquerque. Who lives in Al, Albuquerque? Hey, you live in Albuquerque? Who are ya? Real quick, who are ya? Now, it's free conch. You can live wherever you want. But if you live in Albuquerque, who are ya? That's, that's the thing I want to know. Because, you know, it's New Max. What? What goes on in New Max? It's New Max. It's free conch. Live wherever you want. But if you live in Albuquerque, New Max, who are you? <laughs> I hope that somebody tuned into my podcast right there for the first time ever and heard that sentence and thought, oh, this is in a different language, so I can't I can't listen to this one. So, um, <clears throat> dude, it fucking thunderstormed. I was sitting at this coffee shop because that's what I do. And... Uh, it started fucking thundering. I was with my Irish friend and it just went boom, boom and we jumped and he looked at me and he said, if that happens again, can you hold me? Um, yeah, man, it was, it was fucking, I, we don't have that in, in LA like boom and the lightning thunders. I mean, so Russian, we don't have that in LA, in LA, the boom lightning and the thunders. So Russian, um, so, yeah. But, uh, oh, by the way, um, people are, are saying to me, hey, what's Yakuta mean? I'm a baby. Tell me what the fuck Yakuta means. Hey, you're not a baby. If you don't know what, you, if you don't know if you're a Kuda or not, you're not a baby. I mean, you know, you can listen to my podcast, but you're not a baby. Hey, by the way, good thing it's fucking, hmm. Good thing it's fucking, it's been 10 minutes and it's already sweltering in here because I turned the air off. Oh, cool, New York. Hey, New York. Thanks. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, I was at, I was in Baltimore and I have a question for everybody, actually. And my friends disagree with me and I understand I'm in the, I think I might be in the minority here. I think I am. Can you put in public, can you put your feet up on another chair or like hang it over the table or a couch? Because I do that all the time because I'm a tall drink of water, man. I sprawl. I do that Bon Jovi sit. You know what I mean? I air out my, if I had a, dude, if I had a pussy, I would be airing it out, but I don't I have a cock and it's being aired out. But you know what I'm talking about? I don't wear shorts, so you can't see my balls, so it's fine. I only wear pants. Know why? Because I'm over 11. So, <clears throat> so yeah, man, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm doing this in Baltimore. I'm in a mall. It's got a fucking kiosk, a Starbucks kiosk. And um, I flew in a day early, so I had nothing to do. I went to the mall. I got a Starbucks. I put my fucking leg over the... 
Oh, burped. Sorry. Uh, so gross. Eh, so gross. Uh, not attractive. Um, so I put my leg over the, um, what do you call it, table, and my calf was over like the side corner, or as my Irish buddy would say, the side corner um, of the, uh, sorry, hold on right here, of the uh, table. Um, and as it's over there, the security guard is like cleaning up near me. Now, by the way, the table's a fucking mess. No, nobody's cleaned this table since 1991. It's got fucking crumbs and shit. It's got old uh, muffins that Starbucks discontinued, like just like crumbs and shit. Streaks of like shit from a baby. Um, and I got my fucking calf up, hanging up on there. This guy comes up to me, <clears throat> security guy, with, by the way, had a Mountie hat on. Hey, this guy's a security guard in the fucking mall in Baltimore. Why does he have a Mountie's cap on? Hey, man, take it off. Don't ever, don't even wear a hat. You security, put on a shirt that says security. That's it. You got a gun, don't wear a Mountie hat. All right? He's a mall security. In Baltimore, nonetheless, so he's probably dealt with a lot more than normal mall securities because it's Baltimore, and I'm sure people get stabbed in the face at the mall. But um, so he comes up to me. I see him coming up to me, so I fucking take my leg off the table because people are always telling me to take my fucking leg off the tables or shit and chairs. And he says, hey, man, you can't put your leg up on the table like that. And since I already had taken it off, I said, oh, yeah, it's not up. And he said, yeah, but it was up. And I said, huh. So since it was and it's not now, I guess you don't have to tell me that anymore, huh? <laughs> I'd have fucking slammed him. You know what I mean? I mean, I fucking murdered him in two sentences. That's it. That's a wrap. There's no more to talk about. So he got all bunched up because he's a man. And I'm a man too. So it was like a little fucking bit of a standoff, you know? Uh, so he said, uh, he was, uh, so I said, yeah, I didn't have to, you didn't have to tell me that because I already took him down then, right? And he said, yeah, well, so of course, even though the conversation was over, he said, yeah, well, <clears throat> you know, he says, uh, what did he say? He said, uh, you can't, um, people have to eat there. So you can't be putting your, your feet up like that. And I said, I looked at him. I said, oh yeah. <laughs> and he said, yeah. And then he walked away. So that's my Baltimore story. I mean, it's amazing though. Like when. Well, so anyway, my question is, do you need to fucking, like, can you not put your feet up on it? No, I get it. I get it. Because, oh, yeah, it's, it, people think it's disrespectful and shit. But don't you think it's like a case-by-case case basis? <clears throat> I mean, obviously, I'm not going to do it at a fucking um, restaurant, right? That would be bad. I'm not going to put my feet up on the table. But, like... Sometimes I'll have, like, my foot up on the booth, just chilling. And I got to be like, hey, man, you can't do that. Like, what are you talking? And then they'll be like, treat it like you're home. This is what I do at home. It bothers me because this the ground, everything that's a surface. I got news for you, dude. Everything that's a surface is layered, and and I believe this, in actual shit. Okay. Layered in shit. Layered literally in feces. You hear about when you flush a toilet, if you leave the toilet bowl open, that shit particles fly out like 30 feet from the toilet? Like your whole bathroom is covered in shit. Literal shit. And then they get that on their hands and then they touch everything. There's shit everywhere. Feces are covered everywhere. You're walking on the ground in New York? You're walking on the ground in Baltimore? You think you think just because it's on the ground, it's not also in your mouth? Whatever touches the ground touches something else. That touches your mouth. It, you don't have to be a fucking CSI guy to know that there's shit in our mouths, literally. So I can hang my calf off the table. That's how I feel. You know why? Because there's shit on the table. Also, the table wasn't even clean. Take your Mountie hat off. Guess what? 
Your Mountie hat has shit on it. It's all good, but does. <clears throat> I also don't like people who take their jobs to the next level like that. Nothing was happening, dude. You mall security. Right? Nothing was happening. So just fucking chill. Do nothing. Get paid to do nothing if that's what's happening. I've been fucking um, hard on the road uh, uh, because it's just lonely. I didn't have my openers until I got to New York. So in Baltimore, I was fucking – I don't know why they have 25 sports channels in every hotel room. It's ESPN 1, ESPN 2, ESPN 3, ESPN Classic. Hey, ESPN Classics. What? Dude. The game is over. Hey, the game is in the past. It's over. You know, guys who are like, don't tell me what happened. Don't tell me what the score is. I want to watch the game. I have it t would First of all, to those guys, bye. Yakuda. But this ESPN Classics, I mean, 15 times worse. Oh, but, but Ozzie Smith, it was when he... Bye. Oh, but you don't understand. Bobby Bonilla, that was when he... Bye. But this was the game when Michael Jordan wore the jersey that... Bye. Oh, yeah, yeah, but you don't get it. Because fucking Yamir Jaeger scored three goals on bye. Hey, yeah, but uh, uh, oh, that was when fucking Don Mattingly. Oh, bye. It's a classic game. You know what classic means? Over. It's an over game. But it was when Ken Griffey Sr. Oh, really? Bye. But John Mackin by is his name John Mackin by shouldn't watch a game. Hey, if you're watching John Mackin will play a tennis game. Guess what? You better be there live because he's not he's not televised anymore. And if you're watching a John Mackin game on TV, it's on ESPN classics and you could. All right. You don't. That's crazy, man. I imagine these fucking just fat, fat fucks with mustaches just like hey this was the game no this was the game carlton fisk con carl yastrzemski this was the fucking game yeah that's just espn classics is another another level of hi what are you doing that's like the ultimate level of hi what are you doing like i want to meet somebody doing that and when they go like this i'm raw i'm i'm you know i'm I'm Robert. I want to go, hi, what are you doing? I'm Chris. That comes before I'm Chris. Because what are you doing? Hi, Chris. Uh, hey, welcome to hey, welcome to the game show, What Are You Doing? Today, our contestants are watching ESPN Classic. Now, it, they're watching a, a fucking show where fucking, what's his name? John Allerud wore a regular uh Hat at first base, not a helmet. Uh, sports fucking nuts will know what I'm talking about. I'm not a sports nut. I just I'm not a sport nut. I just remember what the fuck happened when I was watching TV. When I was watching guys throw a ball around because I was 11, and once I got fucking 12, I realized it's not really that fun anymore. I get it. I know my fucking opener, Mike. He always is like, but this is competition at its finest, and this and that. Yeah, I just don't care. I don't have that competitive bone in me. I don't have that. If Here's the thing. I have it with me. I get competitive with myself. But, dude, like, if if I'm on a team and we lose, guess what? It's the other guy's fault. I'm not fucking taking that blame. You should have passed it better. You should have fucking ran around a little faster. Right? Practice. You should have done two-a-days and scrimmaged harder. Me? Not my fault. That's why I fucking like to do, like... <clears throat> 
martial arts a little bit, little bit, and I like stand up. It's it's always a fucking. It's you. You're competing with yourself, man. With my fucking trying to do a um, what do you call it? Um. Uh, the more you know. Uh, uh, what do you call those? Um, God, words are just going, man. I'm 37 and words are just going. Um, public service announcement. Yeah, I can still sing it even though I got my fucking uh, voice is all fucked up. Um, so, yeah, that's just weird. ESPN Classics. <clears throat> I watched. So I just kept flipping, man. This, that's what the life is, man. Um, got my iced Americano, um, went to this hipster place in, in, um, um, what do you call it? The vill or no Lower East Side. You know, it's a hipster place when a bunch of Asians are around it or in it, you know, nobody is hipper than a fucking Asian. I swear to God, they know what's up ye one or two years before you know what's up. They'll be wearing a fucking, like a boat on their head, like a little paper mache boat. And you'll be like, the fuck is that? J what the fuck is that Japanese guy doing? What is that? What is that Korean guy doing? And then a year later, you start seeing motherfuckers popping up in New York, L.A., Seattle with fucking paper mache little boats on their heads. And you're like, motherfucker, they were right. Asians know what's up when it comes to fashion, dude. You laugh. I laugh. I still laugh even though it's now. But they'll fucking do... Dude, bro, you think... You think fucking... Like... These motherfuckers are on cutting edge? Like it, 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 like the American designers and shit? Even like the Italian de designers? Nah. Bro, there's some fucking Asian dude in like... Fuck it, he's in North Korea even though he's not allowed to do it. But he's like underground and he does it and he's so fashion forward, bro. He's got a little boat in his fucking head, a monocle, and wears like hats all around his body. Not just his, uh, uh, like all hats, like straw hats over his dick and fucking uh, legs and sh his shirt is made of hats. And this guy, everyone's laughing and in five fucking years. And then there's somebody in Japan, like in a village somewhere, and he's wearing like a fucking little boat on his head, little paper mache boat. He's got two monocles, and he's wearing feathers from like some bird that is almost dead, but he kept it alive. He just plucks the fucking feathers out, and he pastes them to his body, and everyone's laughing. Even the North Korea guy's laughing at him, but then he's like, you see, you see, and in fucking 10 years, bro, 10 years? We're not going to be the ones who's laughing because we're all going to be wearing feathers with little fucking boats on our heads and two monocles. And that guy will fucking die a hero and no one would have known it because the knowledge is so passed through like the game of telephone that we don't even know what the fuck's happening anymore. We don't know who, who created it. We don't know. We don't know who created it. <clears throat> Fashion forward, man. My babies. Um, Fashion is... uh. Is wild in New York, you know, it's out of control. You see, I saw a guy. I think he, I don't know. Sometimes I don't know if a guy's super fashionable or homeless. I saw a guy with the. I put it on my Instagram story with like a metal fucking twisty around headpiece. I don't know if he was fashion forward or if he was an insane person. He was sitting on a stoop. He's probably crazy, but maybe not. He wasn't Asian though, so maybe he wasn't. Yeah, just talking to people. Um, I uh, oh, by the way, when I when I saw that guy um, with the with the fucking metal hat, fashion forward guy in New York, um, it, I was in New York. I was outside the comedy cellar, just hanging out. I wasn't going out because my voice. But I hear commotion. It's so weird how New York New York is. Like it's so New York always. It you can go out for an hour and the most New York thing will happen to you, right? Like, like this. 
I was out. We were outside of the comedy store or comedy cellar. I was with my opener, one of my openers, Irish. And uh, this dude, I, I hear a commotion. Motherfucker. First of all, I see this dude walk by and I, I get a weird feeling from him. And I pay attention to this shit because I think that humans are capable of knowing when some shit's going to go down before it goes down. Because we can pick up cues and the intuition, women's intuition. That shit is real, dude. I believe that. <clears throat> this dude's walking around. I clocked him. And I knew, I was like, this guy, something's up with this guy. Don't even know why. And you know why, you know why deep down in your head, but you don't know why. You don't know how to articulate it. You're like, something's up with that guy. It's like in movies when somebody's like, I don't like this guy. And I don't know why, but I don't like him. That shit's true. So he's walking by, walks by, I fucking register him. He leaves and I'm like, all right, whatever. So I'm talking to Irish for a little bit and fucking all of a sudden I hear commotion where that guy was walking outside of another fucking club or whatever. And then I see that guy running and another guy chase him like, motherfucker, you gonna get your head smashed in, motherfucker. And then he gives up because he was fat a little bit. And the other guy was a little spry. So he ran away, the first guy that I saw. And then... I was like, oh, well, maybe I was right about that. He started some weird shit. But I was like, maybe it wasn't his fault. And then I see the guy walk back over with like, it looked like a, it looked like a level. Like a level with, with a bubble on it to see it for construction workers. Like a long one with like, um, it was metal with like taped up, a taped up for, it was taped up so he could use it as a handle. And he's like, motherfucker, where are you? He was going to beat the shit out of this guy with a level. Eh, it's illegal. And he didn't have a shirt on at this point. It, it was like so insane. And then, oh, and then the guy with the tin, the crazy metal hat was like, think before you do what you do, man. Think before you do what you do. You're going to go right to jail. Like S in New York. Imagine being from like Idaho and visiting and that's the first thing you see. You'd be like, oh, fuck. I didn't really expect this stuff to happen. The most New York part about it was nobody really gave a fuck that that was going down. Hey, it's New York. Fashion, babies. <clears throat> Here's how you know fashion works because I want to buy that Supreme shit. I don't even get it. All that Supreme shit, that, that brand, whatever that brand is, with the hoodie with the Supreme logo on it. That Supreme logo, anything with that Supreme logo... It, it, people are going to sleep over in front of a Supreme store the night before to get it. They, 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 they put out a brick, a brick with the, the Supreme logo on it, the brick. And they sold it and, and people were lined up to get that shit. So literally that's the joke. Like, I mean, I can't make it funnier. I can't be like, yeah, what if they fucking put Supreme on a blender and then sold that? That's, not as funny as they made a brick and sold it. That's the funniest part. That's the funniest one. What are you going to say? Oh, yeah. What if they sold dildos? That's not as funny. Brick. I mean, and people lined up to get it. Talk about Cuda, dude. But the branding they have is amazing. Just that clean fucking Supreme shit. I want a Supreme hoodie. I want a fucking Supreme hat. I don't even wear hats. I want Supreme. I, must, I wanted the Supreme fucking <clears throat> Pippins. Uh, I didn't get them, the shoes, uh, because I felt like a chump, you know. But, yeah, man, they know. Mm. <clears throat> yeah, dude, I, 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 don't, I don't wait in line for anything, you know. You don't have to. If you're in America... You don't have to wait in line. There's a fucking spot across um, the street from the fucking... Actually, I don't want to give out where. But uh, <clears throat> the, in, in L.A. where they line up every day for breakfast outside of the fucking... And, and I've been to the place, and it's fine. But you're lining up to eat breakfast, and you're not in... Russia in 1982. I don't know if that analogy makes sense. I think probably they did that though in 1982 in Russia. But like, come on, man. 
What do you do? Go, go, to the, go to the place down the street. Hey, 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 man. Hey, I, I want to go up to each of those people, tap on the door. Hey, man, go to the place down the street. They got breakfast too. Hey, excuse me, ma'am, go to the place down the street. Yeah. Excuse me, you coulda, ma'am, you being an idiot, you stay in here, go to the place down the street. Excuse me, sir, and your kids, your kids, I know you don't really have much of a mind of your own because your kids, but your father and mother, they're being fucking pieces of shit. Go down the block, go to a different place, and go get eggs. Wait 30 minutes in line to get a fucking breakfast when you don't have to. Oh, you live in the land of opportunity? Don't do that. I don't get it. Don't wait in lines because you don't have to. Unless you want to, but then also realize you're being piece of shit. It's free conch, but still. Uh, you feel me. I know you feel me. <clears throat> Helix. Night after night, two people lay in the same bed. But when it comes to, but when it comes time to buy a new mattress, only one gets their way. Until now, introducing Helix Sleep, where you can buy a mattress online, customized for both of you, for hundreds of dollars instead of thousands. It's way cheaper than what you normally see. So you got to go to helixsleep.com this is a really great idea go to helixsleep.com answer a few simple questions based on four key preferences and the result will be you know like custom it'll be like a sleep profile that's used to build you your most comfortable mattress you'll ever sleep on helix they work with sleep scientists so it's not like you know some guys that are like I know how to lay down they work with scientists you know what that is that's official they created a bed that is better than any other mattress out there, whether it be in a store, honestly, or online. So it arrives at your door in about a week. So you're tired, order it, shows up, you sleep on it. Shipping is completely free. Go to helixsleep.com slash congrats and get $50 off of your order. That's helixsleep.com slash congrats to get $50 off of your order. Helixsleep.com slash congrats. <clears throat> Hey, guys, you know what I'm wearing right now? MeUndies. If you've been settling for store-bought underwear, five-packs, don't do that. This is going to change your life. This is so good. Don't do those store-bought five-packs anymore. Don't do that. Go to MeUndies and do that. MeUndies.com slash congrats. Get 20% off your first pair. MeUndies are designed in LA, and that's where I live, so you know it's cool. But they're from sustainably sourced micromodal. And that's fabric that is three times softer than cotton. Dude, I got me undies and I gave it to my cousin. I gave him three pairs of underwear at a at a restaurant, which is super weird to give somebody hand somebody underwear in a restaurant. He gave him he texted me later. This is true. He let texted me later. This is the these are the most comfortable things I've ever put on my body. And I, it, it's true. It really happened. That's my cousin, Jordan. It happened. Uh, you can save time and money each month with monthly subscription. You're saving m money and time. It's easy. They send them to you. You're not ready for a subscription. It's okay. You can still save. MeUndies is offering you 20% off your first pair. Just use special URL, MeUndies.com slash congrats and get 20% off your first pair. Go ahead and revamp your underwear drawer. MeUndies.com slash congrats. MeUndies.com slash congrats. You know that's how we do it. So, yeah. New York, New York, eh? Every time I come to New York, I feel like I'm going to see Rizza. And I met him. But I always felt like that even before I met him. New York, eh? Hey, you guys. You ever have a fucking ballpark? Be frank. That's why I feel like people are going to be saying in New York. No matter what, you're walking down the street. Hey, you, hey, hey. I got a question for you. You ever have a fucking ballpark? Be frank. I feel like in New York, they don't even say hot dog. You got a fucking ballpark? Be frank. Huh? Hey, Dominic. Hey, Dom. You ever have a fucking ballpark? Be frank. Huh? And you're like, you're like, I mean, I had a hot dog. What do you mean ballpark? Be frank. It's the same fucking thing. Ah, ain't the same fucking thing, man. You want a fucking ballpark? Be frank. That right there? That's a fucking, that's something you put in a fucking bun. You put in your fucking mouth. You fucking chew it up. You eat it up. You fucking shit it out later. 
You fucking buy a hot dog. You're a fucking, you might as well. The b- b- you have a fucking ballpark, be frank, eh? You have a f- I have a fucking ballpark, be frank. If a fucking New York, now I know people are going to come up to me and ask me and talk to me about that tomorrow because they'll probably listen to the podcast and walk by me and say this shit. But whatever. Hey, you have a, uh, this is the most New York thing that could happen. Hey, you have a, have a fucking ballpark, be frank. And the other guy says, yeah, two, three times. Why? Two, three times a fucking week I eat a ballpark, be frank. I don't even go to a fucking ballpark to do it. I fucking get them. I grill them on a fucking outside. Go to my place in fucking uh, Queens. Forget it, man. Forget about it. I fucking eat a ballpark beef frank all day long. I fucking eat a ball. I got news for you. The other day, I ate seven fucking ballpark beef franks. One day. And let me tell you something. That ain't nothing. When it comes to my Uncle Tony, my Uncle Tony one day, swear to God, sat down, watched me 14 fucking ballpark beef franks right in front of me. God is my witness. You say I'm lying. God is my fucking witness. Um. Yeah, it, I want that to happen in in the world, cause so I can laugh. Mm. Oh, my fucking voice! <clears throat> How about that? My voice is gone, and I understand that it's because I talk as a career. But now all I have to do is talk. Still, I'm trying to get it better for these fucking Florida shows. Square Cash. Square Cash, remember, as I said in the beginning, is the best way to pay people back. Friends, family, henchmen, ghosts, the undead, zombies, penises. You know what I mean? If they need money, you give it to them. You send it to your coworkers, anyone. You re- you, uh, sending or re- receiving money is totally fast and free, and most payments can be uh, deposited directly into your bank account in seconds. Download the Square Cash app, link your debit or debit your debit or credit card, select an amount to send, and type in a friend's phone number or email address to complete a payment. They'll get a notification they just received money. That's it. That's what happens. No gimmicks. Square Cash is better than all the other apps like it. It's not a social network. Nobody finds out when you pay for your hookers and shit. You know? Download the free Square Cash app for iOS or Android now. Be secretive and cool and use Square Cash. You know? You know what I'm saying? Um, uh, yeah. So the thing, let's see. What made me laugh? You know what? This is what I do when I walk around town. Or if I'm on the road, I walk around. A lot of times I check my messages on my phone, you know, texting with buddies. Uh, sometimes I'm alone, though, and I've got nothing. My phone's charging. I'm chilling. I'm just thinking of shit. And I realized that I used to do this way more before phones. And it was way easier to write stand-up because of it. I would just start thinking of shit. And I thought of something that made me laugh so hard. I laugh by myself all the time, by the way. And uh, I guess it looks crazy, but whatever. Um, I laughed so hard thinking of a guy like courting a girl. Uh, and like trying to get her to go out. And she's like, I don't know, you know, whatever. I'm like seeing someone like, okay. And then you know, a few months later, hey, you want to hang out? She just doesn't respond. Maybe a few months later, hey, you want to hang out? Hey, what's up? Hey, and then she disappears. And then, like, maybe this goes on for a year. She's at a party. Hey, let's hang out. She's like, all right, fine. I'll finally, you know, sure. Right? I'll give it a shot. <clears throat> and then the guy finally takes her out to dinner or whatever the fuck, you know? She has a good time. They kiss. Maybe they make out in the car. He lets her out. Good night. Oh, she was pleasantly surprised. <laughs> so, not that. Then... They go out again like three days later, and she still kind of gives them the runaround. She's like, I'm busy. Let's reschedule. And so I was like, okay. So then like five days later, they end up going out. Takes her to dinner again. And conversation's great. Raring to go. Get back to his place. Start having sex, right? And he's like, and it feels and it feels good for both of them. It's great. And say her name is Diane, whatever. And he's having sex with her. And right before he orgasms, after uh, 
after all the year of trying to hang out with her and then courting her for a few weeks, right before he has an orgasm, he goes like this. Ooh, I'm done, your head. I'm so cool. <laughs> Holy shit. I mean, he, that like a lunatic, but like so funny. Like what would she do? She, like after that year of trying to hang out and then him just ruining it in that moment to be like, oh, well, she's never going to hang out with him again. <laughs> what a weird time to mock her. Right before, <laughs> right before he has an orgasm, he just goes, "Oh, I'm Diane. Oh, I'm so cool." <clears throat> like, what would she do? She would be like, "Oh, oh my God, you are a fucking piece of shit," and he would be. Um, but that would be so funny if someone did that and you can't do it. If it's like your girlfriend, it has to be the first time you have sex with somebody. That's what makes it funny because like the audacity and the uncomfortableness of it would fucking annihilate me. I would laugh. I'm laughing. I laugh. Dude, I started crying, laughing about it days ago and it didn't even happen. I was alone. <coughs> Um, so yeah, oh fuck, that would be so funny. I'm going to look at these hashtags here. Um, let's see what's up with game, the game, this game in the system. Congratulations pod. Sometimes these people give me good. Uh, oh, somebody, did you see somebody got a tattoo of Yakuda? What's his name? Anthony Frank Cologne. Unreal. I retweeted it and, um, I re I retweeted it and I put it on my Instagram. If you don't, if you hadn't seen it, but a guy got a tattoo and said you could. Oh, he came to my Atlantic City show. My family came to my Atlantic City show a little bit after. So afterwards, I went out into the showroom and I saw them, and there were like two stragglers left. Security was pushing them out, and the guy was like, "We got Yakuda tattoos, bro." And I was like, uh, "Okay, cool, man." And I thought he was just fucking around. Then he tweeted, "The show was lit or whatever. Check out the tattoos we got. We we were serious." And I was like, "What the fuck?" It says Yakuda on his wrist. I don't know. Getting funny tattoos is weird to me. Like, get it. If you're going to get a tattoo, it's badass. Just go with that. You know how, like, Steve-O has your name, the words your name tattooed on his ass? Um, yeah, that's not, to me, that's, like, insane. That's so weird. I know that's the point, but. Uh, this is a good idea. Paul, or Pablo, at Paul underscore J underscore Jimenez. Good name. When do we get matching outfits and, you know, do some culty shit? You know, here's some, here's what I want. And this is actually a, um, something that's, I'm not fucking around about this. I always thought it was cool when couples dressed alike. I think that that's fucking balling for real. And, and if you have family dress them alike too, it, whenever, if I have a family or whatever it is, a wife and two kids, you best fucking believe we're all dressing the same for a few, a few of the days in the world, you know, not every day. That'd be very weird. We're not all dentists, but like, or like surgeons, I don't know, but like, no, there's no doubt a hundred percent. We're absolutely doing that. Red, red shirt, red pants, like monochromatic too. People are going to be like, what's with that red family? It's on with my family. If I have fucking kids and a wife, it's on. Clo Clothing-wise, thematically, it's on. You get a Tweety Bird shirt, guess guess who's got the Tweety Bird shirt too? Daddy's got it too. Okay, little Tommy? Excuse me, Samantha, my little daughter, put on this goddamn Tweety Bird shirt because fucking Tommy's wearing it and I'm wearing it too. And your wife and your fucking mom is wearing it too. My wife, what the fuck her name is. Um... Yolanda, of course, my wife's name will be Yolanda, but yeah, Yolanda, get the Tweety Bird shirts. Come on, bring them down. 
but I don't want to. Fucking bring him down. I ain't wearing that Tweety Bird shirts no more. Bring him fucking down, Yolanda, and I'm coming up and get him, and I know you don't want me to come up and get him. Fine, shit. <clears throat> That's how it's going to be living with me, dude. It's not even, it's not a cult. That's family, bro. That's family. Um, thoughts on DJ Khaled getting booed off stage at EDC? I didn't know that happened. Steven Zah, Zaharias at Steve Bre. Mm. Uh, I didn't know that happened, but, uh, fuck EDC. How about that? All right. I can't stand people that just think they need to get tickets to everything. I have fucking people I see like that. It's just like, nah. He got booed off stage. How about getting booed off stage at the worst place? Is that good or bad? I don't even know. I'm sure I'd get booed off stage at EDC. Um, yeah, that'd be real bad. Um, that'd be really uh, bad. Getting booed off stage is horrible. I don't think I've ever been booed off stage. No. Um, but yeah. Aaron Brown, at Aaron J. Brown. Please talk to us babies about writing Man on Fire and how your act developed. Give the coot as a little nibble. <laughs> I already mentioned that in one of the past. Uh, this is Aaron Brown. I already mentioned that in one of the past episodes. I don't know which one. But uh, yeah. So go listen to that one. If someone could help him out, tweet him it. I don't know which one it was. Um, so anyway. Um, yeah, but that Man on Fire comes out very soon. Uh, and um, it's fucking uh, <clears throat> exciting. Oh, that was like two years in the making, I think. Uh, last one was in April 2014, and it's 2017 now. So I can't believe I have actually new material f since then <clears throat> that I'm torn to do it with. But uh, I don't know. I kind of want to wear no shirt on a special and be like the jaw rule of comedy. Oh, the way I think Burt Kreischer did that. Never mind. Can't do that. Well, I mean, you could do it also. That was cool. Burt did that, though. <clears throat> He's fucking funny as shit. Um, that guy's so funny, actually. Even like in real life. He's just a great storyteller. Um, so, yeah. Um, all right. Well, what else? I don't know. I'm going to maybe wrap this up because my voice is killing me. And I got to save it for West Palm Beach. But that's West Palm Beach. I will be there soon. I can't wait to get some fucking rays. Catch some rays, dude. I'm going to go get some. I'm going to get a bathing suit because I never pack one. So I'm just going to buy another one. So this time when I bring it home, I'll have 40 bathing suits instead of 30. Dude, I have so many bathing suits because I always buy them on the road. <clears throat> like some idiot. Um, the rain stopped in New York. I'm happy about it, man. I love New York. I'm going to go eat myself a fucking ballpark beef, Frank. I feel like whenever my voice is like really, really, really scratchy that I, I, I'm, I feel like I'm John Malkovich and in the line of fire. Um, I don't remember what he says, but I just feel like this is how he called when he used to call Clint Eastwood and he'd just sound like this talking to him. I'm going to kill the president, Mr. fucking Jack. His name name was... Gee, I wonder if the fucking... It was definitely Jack. Clint Eastwood's name was Jack for sure and in a lot of fire. They should name more lead guys Jack in movies because that's not... That's not... It's like how many fucking... Jack Reacher, Jack Ryan, and all of them, and all the other ones. Arnold Schwarzenegger's played Jack. Hey, Arnold Schwarzenegger is not named Jack, obviously. I think we talked about this in the 10-minute podcast before. Um, yeah. So, I don't know. Hey, you know what I was surprised about uh, this week, actually, was when Cosby got let off. First of all, when he got let off. Man, convicting someone's fucking hard, huh? Like, everything needs to be the deck, the deck needs to be stacked because they can't try. They know, obviously the fucking guy did it because eighty women said he did it and have can recount specific stories. I don't exactly 
I'm not convinced it's the Illuminati that's going after him, you know. But, like, you have to fucking... It has to be on that one case. Like, they can't take any of the outside fucking um, cases and or the, you know, the pending shit. <coughs> and have it cloud the juries in this case. So, I guess they felt they didn't have proof, which is fucking... It sounds crazy. Um, but then when the lawyer, when Cosby's lawyer afterwards had the press conference and he said, Mr. Cosby now has his power back. I mean, is there a worse way to say that after beating a rape case? He has his power back. First of all, he's not he man. Second of all, I mean, that's what you use to rape is your power over women physically. And then for him to be like, yeah, Mr. Cosby's power is back. His power is back. He's said like four times. I don't say that. Have better bedside manner. He might as well walk out and be like, we want motherfuckers. We want motherfuckers. Cosby's power is back. His cock power is back. Drink shit that Bill Cosby gives you. <laughs> like, hey, man, just don't say. Don't say. Hey, man, don't say. That was crazy when they said, when the guy said that, my jaw dropped. I was like, oh, man. This fucking world we live in is a joke, though, dude. Um, But whatever. I'm a fucking comedian, so at least... I, my shit is all a joke and it's supposed to be, <laughs> I guess. I don't know. I got to take care of my voice, you guys. Thanks for listening. Um, you guys, um, I really appreciate you listening. Um, closing statements. Square Cash is the best way to pay people back. Make sure to do that. Download Square Cash app for iOS or Android now. I got my upcoming show dates. Um, tweet me at. Uh, hashtag congratulations pod and also um, there's merchandise there's shirts there's congratulations podcast shirts on my website at crystalia.com so go there support the podcast wear them it's got those cool emojis and the artwork uh, rate and review the show iTunes Google Play and Stitcher uh, and then Man on Fire is coming out next Thursday or I'm sorry next Tuesday on the 27th at like midnight or whatever watch it tweet about it uh, share this podcast with your friends. Help a motherfucker out. Um, you guys, thank you for listening, my babies. One.